LDBC. This is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harris, and you're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harris and Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, got a got a message from a subscriber, and uh, you know the brother asked me, Coach. You know, you say your name is Coach Sheldon Harris, and and um, so I need you to, you know, I need some help on a coaching situation. How do you coach different personalities? Very good question. Okay, I've got a very unique way of doing things. I got a unique way that works for me. Now, I'm not saying that what I do will work for you, but it does work for me. Um, When you coach athletes, and I'm assuming that you're talking about kids, okay, young, you know, maybe teenagers, preteens, when you coach that demographic of athlete, okay, you've got to, uh, you've got to be aware that they're young, and they're going to do stupid stuff. They're going to do stupid stuff, but, you know, with that being said, you've got to maybe garner a type of respect from them that they don't know. Because, see, when they're young athletes, no matter how much that they get on your nerves and just certain personalities really irk you like me, it, there are certain personalities that drain the hell out of me. And I, and I literally mean it. Like, they, they, there are certain personalities that drain, that drain me. And it's like, you know, I'm like, God, man, are you kidding me? You know, like... And it's like sometimes you shake your head because you don't. You, when you see them coming, you like, dang, I gotta look at them again today. Like you feel that way. But they're they're adolescent athletes, so you have to be you have to have the right heart, and you have to have a heart to teach, and that's the thing. Because see, they, they're adolescent athletes; they don't know any better, and they need to be taught. That's where you come in. That's why I come in. And I'm going to tell you the different types of personalities that I deal with and I incur on a daily basis, okay? The first type of attitude that you'll have is the entitlement attitude. Now, the entitled attitude, they'll actually, they'll work. And believe it or not, a a kid who's got that sense of entitlement, they'll work. They'll work hard, too. The thing of it is, though, they think that everything is owed to them. And they'll work hard for a period and they will, you know, experience unsuccess. And so then they will get into their feelings and, you know, think that you told them it's your fault that they didn't succeed when it's just a lot of times it's a factor of time that they haven't been in in the sport that you're teaching them long enough. So with these entitled types, what I do, okay, and I've I've learned how to pick up on if they're entitled. One, I listen to how a kid talks to their parents, okay? That's the first thing you need to do. You need to be, you know, you need to listen on how they talk to their parents. If an entitled kid, they, they speak to their parents a different way than a kid that's not entitled. They tend to give orders to their parents most of the time. And their parents, a lot of times, they comply with the orders. <laughs> it's kind of strange, isn't it? Like, it really is very strange that these entitled kids, they have complete control over their parents. When I notice that this is an entitled kid, what I, what I do is I make a list. I make a list of things that they're supposed to do. You know what I don't do? I don't engage an entitled kid in conversation. I give them a list that they need to do, and for about three months, that's all they do. Because, you know, they're used to everybody, you know, waiting on them hand and foot. They're, they're used to that. They're used to somebody, you know, doing everything for them. They can't do nothing for themselves. And they think that whatever's out there, they think is yours. They think it's theirs. They can have it. Even if you're sitting there, if you have a handful of fruit, oh, they think that you're supposed to give them some because they live on earth. I don't say nothing enough for three months. They get a list every day. But see, what the entitled kid, most of them will do, and they're very smart, when they ask the question, that means that they're ready to be taught. Now, what's the question? The question is, you know, why don't you ever train me one-on-one like you do everybody else? Now, this isn't going to work for every entitled kid because sometimes the parents won't buy into it. See, my situation is different because I'm usually their last stop. That's it. See, they done tried to work with every other coach. They've tried, and the coaches just don't want to deal with them. They don't even want to take their money no more because the entitled kid just think that they're owed everything, and they're not patient. See, what I'm doing is I teach that entitled kid how to have patience, how to have a lot of it. For three months, they get the same list. And see, when they first come into my office, I tell them, I'm the best at this. I got 20 plus years, and even if I only had one year experience, I would still say I'm the best at this. And I tell them I'm the best. So the fact that you're here training with me, I said this, this, this is a privilege. It's not a right. 
you don't get a right to train me. I get a right. I, I, I have an option to train you. And I tell them, you're going to have to go through a three-month grace period. And for a three-month grace period, yep, you got to follow instructions for three months without complaining. If you can't do that, then I can't deal with you. That's it. I don't go into no long, elaborate speech. Either you do it this way or that's it. And now I built my reputation up in, in my city. So they know, okay? So for three months. And the kid, you know, for the first month, they good. They'll do what's on the list, go home. Some of the parents be like, Coach, but man, how is this productive? Yep. And as I get close to the third month, I hear the question, Coach, why, why won't you help me? See, when they, when they ask that question, as soon as that entitled kid asks that question, now they're ready to be taught. But you don't teach them. Don't sugarcoat it. You tell them what the problem is. And I told the one kid this summer, I said, you are a spoiled brat. And I said, your parents don't even like you. I said, even when I first, you know, got around you and I felt your vibe, I didn't like you. And I said, I'm being honest. I said, I don't dislike you. I said, I love you, but I don't like you right now. I said, because you're an entitled little brat. And the way you treat your mom is deplorable. Sorry. And then they asked the second question, because if they asked the first one, they'll ask the second one. So, okay, what do I have to do to get you to train? Because, see, you know, they want to be good. You stop acting like a brat and you start treating your mom like you got some sense and I'll, and I'll train you. And I'll go in, I'll give you one-on-one -on -one attention. See, and that entitled kid, they want attention as well. Because, see, they don't get it. They get the wrong kind of attention. But this entitled kid, he was wanting me to pay attention to him. And so after we laid down the law and the foundation, how it was going to be, you know, never had a problem out of him. And not only that, his teachers wonder, you know, what happened to his attitude. It's an expectation. But see, the parents, they played a pivotal role. Because if the parents was taking him home and, well, baby, he just mean, well, it's not going to work. But the parents played a pivotal role. They didn't go behind my back and tell him, you know, well, you know, uh, well, you know, I'm sorry. You, you know, well, you ain't got to go no more. No, his parents made him come every single day. And he had to see my face or, you know, me not talking to him. But now the kid is a totally different kid. You don't even know who the kid is. But that's that entitled mentality. So you got to burn that out of them and you got to you got to outlast them. See, you got to make them patient. The problem with entitled kids is they have no patience. They have zero. That's why they do and say the things they do to people and they get away with it. The second type of attitude that I see is the hard hitter. The entitled kid, they're not hard hitter. They actually listen well because <laughs> the entitled kid, you can give him a set of instructions. And if he thinks that his little selfish ass is going to get something out of that, guess what? He's going to follow them instructions. The hard headed kid, this is the worst one. No, the hard headed kid ain't even the worst one. This is a hard headed kid with no issues at home. Okay? They bad. Because not only can they not follow simple instructions, but it takes them an hour to do three things. You know those kind of children. You tell them, look, I need these three done, these three things done in about 10 minutes. You look over, you know, an hour later, they're still doing the same thing. That's the hard-headed one. See, the, the hard-headed one, that's the one you're going to bump heads with. But see, I, I don't do that. With hard-headed kids, what I do to them is I make an example out of them. And I make them look completely foolish all the time. Because they always want to argue with you. See, I don't engage a hard-headed kid in argument. I, I, I don't do that. And I look at them and I say, hey, I told you to do three sets of ten. I did. I said, well, you know, I counted eight. Well, I counted ten. I said, okay, so, I mean, do they teach you how to count at school? Because, you know, I counted eight. But if you say you did ten, well, go ahead. I can't, I can't stop you from being average. You see, that's it. That's the end of it. And see, I'm breaking down it like, like you know how a boxer break down another boxer? I'm breaking that hard-headed kid down. Because guess what the hard-headed kid will do? See, just because they can't concede a position, they can't do it. So I let them think, oh, okay, well, you're right. Okay, if you did it, that's fine. Be average. So they'll go over there just to defy me and go do extra work just to get it done. You see, I'm not really embarrassing them or making them feel bad about it. I make them look foolish. But I end up getting what I want because the hard-headed kid is not a bad kid. He's just a kid that just don't know how to listen. You got to teach him. See, they, when you deal with children, they're not adults, okay? You have to teach them. They have to be taught almost everything. 
Because these kids, they don't have experiences and they don't know how to solve their own problems. See, what I do is I put them in a position where they got to solve their problems. I don't solve their problems for them. Now, you know, I go to bat for them. If something, you know, ha happening in the house or, you know, if they're going through like a lot of tough situations. Yeah, I go to bat for them. I do that. But solving problems to get them to do what I want to do? Nah. They got to do that. That's just how that is. That's just the way that is. Okay. And also, too, with the hard-headed kid, you're going to have to learn a lot of teaching them lessons. And sometimes you're going to have to be teaching them the lesson over and over and over. And let them make the mistake. See, let the hard-headed kid mess up all the time. Don't correct them. Don't correct them. You tell them again what they supposed to do don't correct them don't tell them it's wrong just say well you're supposed to be doing this and if they say well nope then you make them feel foolish and then you move on because the hard-headed kid what they want you to do they want you to argue with them no don't do that either all right the third kind of athlete you have and how to coach them this is the person that they have extenuating situations at home that sometimes cause them to be some days happy some days emotional and when you get the emotional days, they're going to make your life a living hell up in there. <laughs> they just are. Okay? So with those athletes, you have, to, you have to build, and I got to tell you, you have to build that personal relationship immediately. See, working out, that's, that's just something else. Okay? They don't really need that to survive. You're working on what they need to survive. And right now, they need somebody to listen. They need a mentor. They need somebody that's going to do right by them. Even though they might be a jerk, a jerk, even though they might be a, a, a jack monkey that day, even though they might be just, a, just the biggest butthole that you've ever seen on God's green earth. All of that might be true, but they need a mentor. See, you got to understand, you got to get inside their mind because see, you don't know if that kid is suicidal, which I've dealt with so many of them. You don't know if that kid went away, went away from home. You have no idea. You just know some days they're happy and some days they say half and half. So now you got to build a relationship and it's got to take precedence over them being a good athlete. See, if you fail to not build a relationship, then it don't matter if they're a good athlete. They're going to be a bad athlete. They may even be a good athlete, but they might have a bad core. And if you're rotten in the core, then eventually that's going to affect your athletic performance. OK, I want you all to understand and take notes because I'm teaching you this. This is 20 years of experience in a, what, a 15, 16 minute video. Some of these kids have problems. And some of these problems, you know, they see in the psychologist. And sometimes the psychologist don't help them. Because, see, the psychologist is there for only, uh, only for the money. They're not giving them a solution. They're giving them drugs to take the, to calm them down. So you got to give them a solution. A lot of kids, honestly, they fire their psychologists after they get in my program. They fire them. Because they don't need them. They realize that the problems that they have, they know how to solve them. I start teaching that kid with those problems. I start teaching him how to solve his own problems. If he's having an issue with his teachers at school, don't have your parents go resolve it. You resolve it. You go talk to the teacher. You figure out what you see. I make all these kids do that crap. You figure out what you got to do. You keep up with your grades. Now, when it comes report card time, you know, I'm not checking up on your grades. If I see something out of whack, then, well, you can't come back to training until you pull the grade up uh, to a satisfactory point. You see, that kid that's having the emotional distress, you got to give them something to hang on. See, you got to be the hope for them. Because if they can't have hope in something that you're trying to teach them, then it's lost. You're going to lose them. And when they see that you're offering them some hope, they'll come around and they'll start being the athlete that you want them to be. See, what I'm dealing with and what I'm trying to tell you to deal with, brother, you got to deal with the psychology. You got to deal with the psychology of the athlete. Excuse me. You got to deal with the psychology. See, you, you, you have to deal with that. If you can't address an athlete's mind, you can't get them to be productive in the body. You can't do it. Why you think so many fighters out here, you know, they got the skill set and the talent in their body, but mentally they just weak because they don't have the right mentor actually, you know, telling them what they need to know. See, a good mentor, a good friend or a good coach, a person, a coach just taking your money. Oh, he loved you just the way you are. But a mentor, he loved your butt too much to leave you that way. And what that means in layman's terms is that, you know what, you can be better than what you are because you are much better than what you present. See, just taking their money, you're not going to get the best out of them. And they'll end up quitting. See, when you, when you do it, not for, the, not for the money, but you do it for the passion, 
And if you passionately pour into every athlete that you get, the money will come your way. You you will make money. That that's going to be a side effect. But you'll make permanent money. So you won't just be getting this little nickel and dime money for a month here and a month there, and then people out of your your program like a revolving door. People rarely leave, and if they leave, you know what? They're not going to say Coach Shelton Harrison was lazy. They'll never say that. They'll say he's too tough. That's what they say. You know, he, he don't play. He's not going to play with you. I don't care. If you go there, you're going to be good, but he ain't going to play. See, that's what they're going to say. I don't, I don't care if they don't like me. But I know that still, even if they did leave, I imparted wisdom onto them, and they're still a better person because they met me. And that's what I think. I believe that every single day of the week. So if you're going to coach, if you ain't coaching their mind, then, you know, you're lost. There's nothing you can do. You're not going to get these guys to produce. They're not going to produce. You got to take a step back and you got to start analyzing each of these behaviors. And then you got to start figuring out why the hell do they act like this? There's a reason. There's a cause to it. See, there's always a cause. Everything has a cause. Everything. And it's cause and effect. But see, they're coming to you and, and they're at a young enough age now where you, you can set them straight. They don't need a bunch of doctors. They don't need all these people trying to tell them that they're crazy. Nah, man. You can set them free. I done seen it done over a hundred times in my, in my lifetime as a coach. I've seen over a hundred kids be released from their demons. I done seen over a hundred of them. Okay? And let me tell you, it takes a special person to do what you're doing. It takes a very special person. See, you, you, you can't just go and get into it and say you're doing it for the money. The money is a side effect of you making the mind as good as it is. Taking somebody who don't have anything, don't know anything, don't understand anything, and then you give them hope. Because, see, not only, you know, yeah, you get on them and you, you tear them up a little bit, but then day by day you build them right back up into the champion that you want them to be. And that, my friend, is just the way that is. Brother, I hope I answered your question. This is your boy, Coach Shelton Harrison. I'm done. What are you waiting on? Subscribe.